Today we're going to look at importing survey data points uh, fill to finish by using the survey database tools in Civil 3D. Uh, first thing, this is a like a civil imperial type setting drawing. Uh, if you have your two tool base, go ahead and click on that. And we want to go to survey database and the first thing we want to do is right button and select the location this is a location where you will actually be storing your database information that's stored in a directory that you want to keep it on so you want to set the working folder. In this case I'm just going to set it under the C drive under temp and then you want to go ahead and set a name for this. It's whatever you it could be your field book like field book one or it could be just field. data and you can put everything underneath that directory and here's your options in here and the first one you're going to do is select the import and once you get in here you can see that it specifies your database in here if you need to edit some settings you can go here and do that if I did want to set my coordinate system I could do that now not necessary always but this is where you can do it. And then hit next. This is where you want to grab the actual file that you're going to be inserting. And the format down here is important. This will be point northing easting Z and then comma delimited. It's got your point description at the end there. You kind of look at it down here to make sure it's right. Hit next. Uh, there's nothing on the network that's significant needed on this particular survey, so I'll just hit next and then I can kind of review everything when I get to this box here. Now I have a certain set of prefix figures that are tailored to specific jobs such as you know one may be TVA, one might be the company, might be different clients. I'll go over that in a minute once we get done to show you how that works. And then you should hit finish. If there's any you can always go to these areas if you if you need to go look at these to see what's going on. A lot of times these show up no matter what you do, but you'll be able to see when you get in the drawing whether there's anything going on that's not right. This is quite a big file, so take a minute. Close that out. And here we can see the line work is automated. It comes in based on the field data and the way it was surveyed and collected. And all this is in 3D. These are 3D lines. If you click on one, you'll notice that the ribbon up here comes up asking you if you want to edit some of the properties of that. If, if you do want to edit, you need to have your survey database here open. <clears throat> now you can see all the points related to that figure and all the other information. Do you want to close it? And some other editing features. And that essentially is how you import points 
using the survey database in Civil 3D and all these elements are live inside this file here. If you wanted to go import another one you could just import add another fill book So that just added some, filled in some more data. Again, if you need to edit these, you, you can right button and it brings up the editing capabilities of all the different lines of features that you have in here in your points. Essentially, if you do the coding right and all this, it comes out looking pretty good. So let's look at some of the features over here as to why this happens. If you noticed uh, under figure prefix databases, I have several different clients that we use, and each one has a different type of line styles and layers and things of that nature for all these different lines. So if we take a look at the one that I'm currently using here, and I go to manage that, then you can see that these are the codes and the determination of what you want to do such as is it need to be a break line, does it need to be on what layer you want to create it on, things of that nature which are kind of important when you bring this stuff in but that's what defines those items. We can look at this here this is a field book uh, code sheet so the surveyors know how to use all this. As you can see there's ABT abutment and there's an abutment right there so that should line up with the field guys when they go to to put that in the data collector and you bring it in it should draw up pretty close also you have the <coughs> line code sets this is stuff that actually tells you how your line to do you know, starting a line drawing around curves things like that kinda of telling it what to do like beginning line is B, continue, end, close little codes you put in to manipulate the lines into the actual survey uh, figures that come in <clears throat> so one last thing that I want to touch on this is if you somehow get in here you can't find where you created these code sets but you don't know and you create them on a directory where you have your templates and things stored online or on your server and you want to know well, how do I set that to where this defaults to those directories uh, if you go back to survey up here at the top of your tools and you go to modify and then hit user settings up here this will show you a lot of where your directories are set so if you do create some of those files and you keep them on a server and you want to default to those so everybody can get to them, that's where you will be able to set that. And that's, in a nutshell, how you do a field to finish import points to create a topographic survey. Okay, the next thing that you can do after you create your line work and pull all your points in using the import survey database you want to do your 10 surface and this will be a good check as well to make sure that your features came in with your contours so we can go over to surfaces under the prospector right button and create surface we can call this one an existing EX will be fine and under that is how you define your, your surfaces by definitions and in this particular instance since we've already imported all this data in it it should model our surface we don't have to add a whole bunch of these other things although you may have to go back later and put some boundaries and break lines in to do a little bit of editing but the main 
part of it all we have to do is add the point groups and if you'll notice two fill books that I brought in are created as point groups when I brought so I can click on those so if we go to point groups add and then click select those two hit OK and now I'm not finished yet so obviously you know when I get down in here I can trim this border out and clean up these contours but as far as the actual information I did do in here we can check that to see how that's going to look okay. I want to change my scale so I can see down a little bit so I can see in there. So we can kind of check our line work out a little in here and we can look at contours and see how those actually follow the curve and gutters. It looks pretty good and that way you can go in there and start editing features or points in there if you need to to uh, fix your surface and that's the way you can kind of do a check on it and that's how you create a surface right after you do your import good deal